The Redwood National and State Parks have their very first artist in residence, Alicia Wilson. On November 10th, 2023, at Schmidt's House of Jambalaya, the Redwood Voice crew came along to document and share her presentation and her art. My name is Alicia Wilson, and I was the Redwood National and State Parks artist in residence for the summer of 2023. Uh, and the piece that I am donating is called Condor Spirit Rising. Um, the reason that I did a condor is because um, the Condor Recovery Project that the Yurok Tribe is doing is an incredible thing and it's seen numbers grow. And so the spirit of the condor is very important and uh, all of these things, the wildflowers, the, the trees, our sky, everything is very important including our tiny little banana slug right here that I had to put in there because it's such an incredible and important piece. It's been here since the dinosaurs. So something that has lasted and something that is returning and that's where my heart was as far as the donation piece. Basically, my instructions were come spend time in our forest, be inspired, create, do a public presentation and donate one piece. And I said, can I invite students? Because I have a real heart for working with students and rising artists. I have a few here I'm looking at right now. And uh, I was able to, from the very beginning, um, collaborate and ask questions with my teen students that are, that are doing art. Uh, and Casey Bliss, she came to the program and helped facilitate this. She'll be here tonight. So for me, it's not just about the art. It's about being able to connect and create together. And in fact, we do a lot of co-op art at our school so but something that really excited me was the ability to do some co-op canvases with several visitors uh, for example at a campfire program with ranger jason van vector um, we brought a blank canvas and while he was giving a presentation about the redwood ecosystem we invited guests from the audience to come up and just to create and paint with the theme in mind of what elements really touched them during their visit in the Jed Smith State Park. A second program, um, campfire program, this started and same thing, same topic was elements, but because we had different people in the audience and different movement and feel, this is what evolved. So it was about 25 people that created this at the campfire program and then I took it to the trailhead of uh, Fern Canyon and people who were just there visiting, children and elders, they came and painted with me as well and so this is what evolved. So just being a connector with the process of art to enjoy our parks and to really connect with the elements around in our unique area it was a complete and magical thing to do. After filling in the details about our pieces for us, the presentation began. Patrick Taylor, a National Park Service employee, started by explaining the background of the Artist in Residence program. Um, Yellowstone National Park, when the, the politicians back east first started hearing about this land, there was just kind of this incredible, like, no, there, there's nothing like that. This is made up. You know, it's like the fish story where it gets more and more elaborate. And there was a man named Thomas Moran who went on an expedition. He was a, a European-born painter. And he painted everything and came back and showed it to everyone saying like, this is it. This is not an exaggeration. This is what it is with the geysers and the bison and everything else. And literally it was his artwork that helped convince Congress to say, maybe we better protect that piece of land out there. Let's not let it be developed. Then the parks kind of fell away from art for a, a little bit, but there's probably some famous names you've all heard like Ansel Adams. Um, yeah, there's just these people that come through like every couple of decades that remind us about how important this, these landscapes are um, and that they're, they're more than just a pretty picture. Like usually it's the pretty picture that captures it, but it's kind of the feelings behind it, the spirit behind it that matters. And uh, several years, well, decades ago now, a lot of parks said, we want to really kind of push and sponsor this messaging. We know everybody comes here, they get their own postcard, they take their own pictures, but people connect to the parks in different ways. So we're gonna start this artist, originally it was called an artist in park, but when you make that an acronym, it's an ape, and everybody's like, well, I don't know if ape is the best, <laughs> best one. Um, so they switched it over to artist in residency to really focus on that residency part, that we want people to come stay in the park. So it's very much a place-based program. Lots of times we have people from far and wide that say like, oh, I'm gonna drive through, can I paint a picture and donate it or whatever? And like, 
yes, that's great, but it's the like being here, being rooted here for a little while that really matters. Um, Redwood National and State Parks is a little behind the curve, which is surprising because it's such an inspirational place. Uh, but my, my predecessor, predecessor, excuse me, Candace Tinkler, probably a lot of you know her, she started to push for the program a few years ago, and then COVID hit, then she retired. Um, and when I got here, my boss, the superintendent Steve Met, said, like, one of your top things is to launch the artist in residency program. It's just been like hanging out there 95% ready to go. We just need somebody to get it going. Um, so I met with RPC, the Redwood Parks Conservancy that's hosting this tonight, and we strategized, like, how can we do this in a way that kind of launches in a very successful way, especially considering I'm terrible at art, don't have a neck for it, I don't like speak the language of it. So how can we do it where we have somebody that's successful off the bat? We don't want to bring in somebody from far away and let them kind of flounder by themselves. So we started talking with Danaka that played a huge role in helping us bridge the gap and helping us understand how can we vet the applicants. Um, we put out our first call. There's a good chance not a lot of you even know that there was a call last year for it, and that's because we tried to keep it kind of small and local. We didn't want people from all over overwhelming us. Um, there were a lot of very talented artists, but we thankfully were able to select Alicia, who we'll introduce in just a second more. Um, and she came in and she was fantastic for us. Uh, as I mentioned, we didn't really know what we were doing, so we wanted somebody that was like independent and flexible and was willing to be our guinea pig and help identify what are we not doing well, how can we get better, and she did a great job of being totally independent but still giving us feedback and like looking for ways we could help her and she could help us. Um, and you can see the, the outcome of that behind me here. And After Patrick passed our lapel mic on to Alicia, she went back over the paintings with the audience, explaining the story and emotion behind each piece and detailing the frame which had previously adorned it. My only complaint, though, and I told Curtis that I would definitely <laughs> bring this up, is that this was framed in a gorgeous poppy orange, but uh, it was beautiful, and I do get that frame back. But, um, but the, the pretty plaque that they needed wouldn't fit on it, so they had to reframe it, but that's okay. Poppy orange did look very good on that. Alicia then passed the microphone off to Curtis so he could conclude with the upcoming candlelit walk and event details. And then one of the things that always makes this thing so important is your guys' support through the Redwood Parks Conservancy. Without your support, without your donations, um, there's so much work that we can do or cannot be done throughout the support that you give us and the community gives us. So once again, thank you for attending this um, awesome event, the first event. Uh, we have two more next year, and we got a lot more things coming up. We do have a candlelight walk that's happening December 2nd, December 3rd. Uh, we also have a lot more events coming in next year. Uh, one of the things that we got different this year, we're going to have all our events posted on Eventbrite so the community can see it. Um, and yeah, I would just like to thank everybody once again for supporting the park, supporting the Conservancy. Obviously, this is a beautiful painting. Thank you very much. I have the uh, frame uh, <laughs> <Thank you. laughs> outside. So. That, that, was a, that was a tough conversation because I was like, I don't want to surprise you, but we got to, you know. So she took it well, and I took a little licking for it, but that's okay. Um, we will have an online auction that this painting will be available for, and it's going to be in conjunction with the candlelight walk, and there's going to be other things uh, with that online auction that are available for supporting the park service and RPC. So we'll have announcements coming out with that through email blasts and then through our websites, um, through our visitor centers as well. So thank you very much for coming out. Thank you for supporting us. After the presentation, we were able to interview Sal Munoz of the Redwood Parks Conservancy to learn what exactly is the Conservancy and what is its purpose. So the Redwood Parks Conservancy is a, a non-profit organization and we work with the parks, with the state and national park to be able to manage and protect uh, the natural resources in Del Norte County and Humboldt County. Uh, we manage the um, visitor centers uh, different in six different locations. That's in Pico, in uh, Sumeg, in Prairie Creek, in um, uh, Hayuchi, at the Jed Smith uh, Visitor Center, and the Visitor Center here in Crescent City. We sell merchandise, and then uh, from the profit, then we provide those funds to the parks uh, to pay, to cover expenses that are required to be able to manage the natural resources better. So that's what we do. We're also sort of a part of uh, the democratic uh, process in managing natural resources. We act as a 
as a buffer, should we say, between the public and and the uh, uh, in the parks, so that then if somebody wants to give money to the parks, they go through us, and so the natural the parks, the natural resources are not in danger of being you know grabbed or or there's no risk for the parks personnel, so that nobody receives any kind of preferential treatment, should we say? But also. We, uh, our presence allows uh, the public, citizens, to be able to uh, participate in the management of the park. So we can bring in you know, artists, we have interns, we take, um, we provide uh, rides, we take people to the parks, we have a lot of activities. Uh, we have something that we call the Titaneers. So that's about 60 people who are walking along the trails. We plant trees. We just do a lot of activities with people from citizens who want to be in the parks making a contribution to protect the resources. And we facilitate that uh, activity. With the conclusion of Sal's interview, what's the conclusion of the event? If you would like to learn more about the Redwood Parks Conservancy or donate, you can visit their website at redwoodparksconservancy.org forward slash donate dash RPC. For Redwood Voice Community News, I'm Ethan Cadelderigo.